So, what is a masterpiece? Well, the word masterpiece holds different meanings for different people. For example, for a writer, it can be their best piece of work. For a chef, it can be their best dish. And for an artist, it can be their best piece of art. Hello everyone. I'm Ananya Dube, a 17-year-old author from New Delhi, India. My book, The Masterpiece, was published fairly recently. Uh, let me give you a premise about my book. So, it traces the journey of a girl, Fiza, who tries to find her identity through art. She comes from a troubled landscape and her past and the present are at conflict with each other. This book focuses on her bonds, family, relationships, dreams and aspirations as she comes to terms with her reality. So today I'll be reading the 12th chapter of my book, which happens to be my favorite chapter and a few more excerpts from the same book. January 19, 1990. In the dim hours of the evening, River Chalam rose in fury. Its waves splashed on the banks angrily. Kusum had bolted herself inside. The morning had brought about more bloodshed. Her eyes held fear and horror of those brutal men with Kalashnikovs. She had seen them pulling out the pundits from their houses, killing them on the street. She feared that she would be the next. She had made Nanda go to sleep long back. She could hear the slogans. They pierced through the thickest of the walls, each word clear enough. Words demanding freedom, words asking the pundits to flee, words talking of consequences if they did not. It was at that time that she realized that words could be a lot more powerful. At the spur of the moment, she realized that she would have to leave if she wanted her daughter to see the light of the day. Her bravado won't get her anywhere. Kusum packed up a bit of money in a small bag, covered her face with a dupatta and picked up her daughter along with her. Nanda was still asleep. She could hear the horrible sounds coming closer. The back gate was her only chance. She crept out stealthily into the night. The stars hung loosely in the sky. It might have been a pretty sight to behold had the tension not been so rife. She rushed out in the direction of River Jhelum. Maybe she could ferry across somehow and take a bus to Jammu where her distant aunt lived. She rushed as fast as her feet could carry her. The river wasn't too far from her house. So what happens when we end up at a place that holds a tons of memories? Let's find out. The house was exactly as it was, dilapidated. She walked right inside. The doors creaked more than ever. She sat down on the floor, which was weed covered, and the events, as usual, started playing in front of her. The lady in white was carrying a small child in her hands, a six-month-old perhaps. She cooed the lyrics in the tune that Fiza thought she knew. She started humming along. The lady threw the child in the air, only to catch her again. She rubbed her nose to the baby and the child giggled, almost as if on cue. And Fiza could recognize her own giggle in the child, the same way her voice almost cracked up when she laughed. The lady looked right through her as she patted the child on the back. And Fiza almost wanted to be there, right there with that baby. And just like that, the lady faded away. The creaking of the hinges of the door brought her back to herself. She looked through fearful eyes, for she didn't know what was coming to her. But then the same boy appeared. She knew him now. He was Ali, and he stayed right across the river Chalam. But she didn't know that he too came here at times. He turned red when he saw her sitting there. Hey, she called out. You never told me that you come here too. He spoke slowly. That day, when you told me about this house and said that you often come here, I felt intrigued and I started coming here almost daily. But I felt nothing but empty spaces, he confided. Fiza beckoned him to sit beside her and for a few minutes, they just sat in the dilapidated structure in silence. 
He was the first to speak. So, did you see her again? Who? she asked. That lady you speak of? He spoke. Yes, she replied. He nodded. Did she say anything? No. And Ali just nodded. He didn't prod her with questions. This was what she loved about him. He didn't demand everything to be told. Whatever she told him was of her own accord. Sometimes we want to speak but we feel at a loss of words. So this poem of mine which I'm going to read right now explains exactly that. When the words we speak just don't tumble out. When the future looks bleak and the soul shouts out. When dreams and desires aren't there anymore and all one wants is a heart that's pure. When there is grief as heavy as a stone and those meetings brief while you walk alone. When all you want is a good day ahead, just plop down on the pillow and go to bed and read my words which are for the best. Finally, I would like to wind up with another poem from my book which talks about fate and reality. If only we could change the fate that was ours. If only we could turn back the days and hours. If only we could heal the scars deep beneath. How nice it would have been if those moments we could relive. If that pain could be hidden under that pretty smile. If only our heart could narrate how it feels. Then we would laugh under the sheet of stars. And then our smiles would mingle with our tears. And long gone will be our fears and inhibitions. And then the dead would live for old time's sake. Perhaps then we could give that love we could never take. The masterpiece can be found on the official site of Yukioto and for the time being on Flipkart as well. I do hope that you'll give it a read and give your reviews as well. Thank you for tuning in.